I don't have enough range. I need more range. Everybody needs more range. Oh my gosh, what are we talking about? EVs and range anxiety. I know this is an old topic, so what I've done this time is brought examples of some of the top 10 longest range vehicles you can get, and we're going to discuss some of the reasons why you're not buying them. I got Herbert with me from Brighter. He is fantastic. I had a comment last week saying I've watched Herbert interview so many people. I had no idea he's actually an expert himself. He is. <laughs> and that is why I bring him on twice a sure. week to share his wisdom. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> Did you know you're an expert, Herbert? I'm not an expert. Because I, I I knew. I learned things because, number one, I actually read the most in terms of every single article, every single video, I watch it. And then, of course, I interview experts like you. And when yeah. I do that, I pick up little things. And then I share it back with other people. So that's my role. <laughs> and I appreciate every part of that. That's wonderful. So what we're talking about here is, let me get over to it. We've got this fun slide. This is from Mazda, where they yeah. said, range anxiety, what it is, how to overcome it, because people still think about it. They say, well, I, you know, I don't even know where chargers are. Herbert, how do you find chargers? <laughs> well, I use a Tesla and my Tesla app has not only all the superchargers, but then you can press a little button and it'll tell you all the third party chargers. They're, they're everywhere. And that's like basically pretty easy to, to know. And there's a lot of them at this point, depending it's on very, the city, I'm sure. It's very easy. Yeah, it's if you're using navigation, you can put in a destination that's 3,000 miles away and it'll tell you where you're going to stop to charge. And if you're using FSD, it'll just take you there. And if you don't like that charger, pick a different one. It doesn't care. There's plenty, typically, on most routes. And uh, if you're not using navigation and you start getting low, it'll say, by the way, you're driving in a direction that might not get you to the next charger. Turn around. So my gas cars have never done that. That'd be wonderful if they could. But um, you had said, uh, so what is the average range of an EV these days. Yeah. Well, first of all, the, you know, this idea of range anxiety is a big deal. It is still, like, I think when people decide to buy an electric vehicle, the number one concern is still price. The number two concern is range anxiety. Problem with that is that the range anxiety kind of outdated perception. It was what they used to think was an issue rightly so when electric vehicles were still coming to play every single day that changes and then um you know like I, i've been saying this for so long it's funny but it's like you know people go aren't don't you have anxiety with range like as in they don't say that word but they'll give what do you charge oh my god you have to spend 50, 30 minutes in charging and i can go to the gas station in four minutes and they're everywhere and i asked them well yeah i guess you're right but i have more gas price anxiety and i have more service anxiety and it's true like when i buy a gas car i'm like oh my god how much more am i going to spend three four five seven years from now for whatever the, whatever the mechanic tells me is wrong with my car i go yes <laughs> yes just just slap the credit card whatever you say it is it is what it is right um and then gas prices are through the roof and then that gets you know you, you never worry about that so let's talk range anxiety the range anxiety these days the typical electric vehicle in 2025 290 miles on a single charge but they could if it was a real issue they could easily give you 400 miles or even nowadays getting to closer to the 500 mile range but the, the why do you do that if the average daily driver in the us and uk is 40 miles under 40 miles so this range anxiety thing is uh is not an issue when i first got my tesla first time ever in and I'm a late adopter for this because I, I was an investor before I was a buyer 2020. And you know how before I got the charger in my car, my garage, I would just go and plug it into a regular outlet, just any regular outlet. And it would trickle charge. But by the next morning, I got enough for the right. day. And, and if I keep doing that every night and I barely drive it every day, it gets loaded up pretty nicely. So after about two, three months, I realized, I thought, you know, I don't actually have to buy a, a fast charger in my garage. Now, the, the issue is that there are people who, you know, many people who have homes are able to put a charger there for about a thousand, thousand five hundred dollars you can put a charger in. And then there's people who live in, right, um, condos, apartments, and they don't have it. Now, more and more of these buildings are now putting in these chargers because 10% of people 
are demanding it. But uh, my daughter, for example, is in LA and she was having to, you know, she's renting. And so she needs to go to a supercharger, but she just goes to a supercharger once a week. Mm-hmm. And that's enough. And that it's, she has no issues with it. She finds it, it's not a big deal. Uh, so it's it, not it a is, big it deal. Is, it is an issue, but um, it's not and, compared to other things. Yeah. I went eight months with my Model Y without mm. access to a level two charger at home. And yes, the 40 miles of range that I can add overnight is typically more than I would need. Well, but I have to go, you know, far. I have to use most of my battery. Great but I don't need another 40 miles tomorrow. So I would be able to catch up. I think in the first eight months, I had to go to a supercharger once or twice. No big deal. But let's talk about the people for whom it is. Let's talk about the vehicles that actually have the big, big range. Uh, Number one on the list, Lucid Air Grand Touring. 512 miles of range. Mm Do you know how many of those they sell? Mm. Not very many. (laughs) <laughs> because the price is <laughs> prohibitive. On. The price is prohibitive. And that's 20, 30, 50, the reality. And it's saying 114900 I assume that's with absolutely no options. The car looks like this. It's beautiful. beautiful I think car. it's beautiful. It's absurdly yep. quick. Handles like a heavyweight sports car. Unbeatable range. Takes forever mm-hmm. to boot up. Proximity key is infuriating in safety tech. Needs more work. But it's a great car. Um, so this is, uh, you know. There was a company that made a Tesla that was a a Model S that had twice the range. And they did it by ripping out the interior and putting a second battery pack on top of the first one. Right. And it got almost double the range because it has double the battery. I mean, now it weighs as much as a tank. Mm -hmm. But, and so, well, why doesn't Tesla do this? Because people won't pay for it. But there are some better deals out there. Let's look at the next one on the list. We've got the 2025 Chevy Silverado work yeah, truck. 492. Fantastic. 492. Mm-hmm. This is what you want if you're going to tow. You're still only going to get, they tested it, 232 miles towing. Uh, but that's a lot more reasonable than all of the other trucks tested, which came in at under 100 miles. Uh, once fully loaded with all the weight and all that. And for the curious, I don't know if you need to know, but this is what it looks like. looks fine. I think it looks good. Um, And then we get to the uh, Cadillac Escalade IQ. 460 miles, 130,000. I would caution that uh, that price is where it starts, not where it ends. Yeah. So then, it, here's the thing, right? So this is the way it is today, but battery costs are falling big time. So I have no doubt we will get to 500 miles. In fact, sometime in the future, we'll get to 1,000 miles. Prices of batteries will fall, and then the, the efficiency of those batteries will get better. But today, it doesn't make sense. And the actual uh, technology that I think Tesla is working on and others, it's not, you know, let's give you a bigger battery to give you more miles. It's how much, how fast charging can can get you. And right now it's shocking, right? 80% of your battery capacity can be done in 20 plus 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And so you can get 300, minute, 300 miles in just 20 minutes. So yeah. if, you, if you don't, like I think uh, Elon explained it a long time ago, right? Think of the, what is it you explained to me, but basically uh, when a, you, you plug it in and you're trying to fill up the battery, it's got little spots, it's like a parking lot. And mm-hmm. so at first there's a lot of empty space so that it's easy for the electrons to find where they need to park. Yeah, park <laughs> but anywhere. But eventually there's like a, par- a, a open spot here and open spot here. So these electrons are looking, where do I go, where do I go? So it takes, so by the time you get to the, the first 80%, it's very quick. But the, the last five, 10%, it takes a lot longer to get that extra percent, extra percent takes a lot, lot longer. And so if you don't, if you don't need to get to 100% and you're just 80% every time, you can get there in 20 minutes in and mm-hmm. out, man. Just get your tw- up there. I went, I go to Vancouver quite often from Seattle. It's a two and a half hour ride. And uh, we always stop at one place. But I li- rarely, I, I stop the car, I plug it in, I go into the supermarket, I do, you know, I use the washroom right. and I come out and we could already leave. Yeah. Time and I to would go. get, I, I would already get, 
First of all, I li- I'd like to have my you know thing higher, but uh, I don't like to break it down to 10%. I like to get home. I still want to have 30%, 40%. So I always mm-hmm. just wait a little bit longer. But if, if I needed to, I didn't need to. And by the way, my car, long range Model 3, I could go from Van- from Seattle to Vancouver and back Non-stop. without charging at all. Yeah. Now, if I did that, I'd, I'd come home with like less than 10% and I don't ever want to, I just right. like to be safe and all. But if I if I needed to, oftentimes my children would say, "Let's just go straight home." And it's like, "Yeah, good." <laughs> Do you want to stress me out? No. Uh, I was at a supercharger when uh, Justin, the bearded Tesla guy, showed up with Simon from Tesla Light Shows, and I leaned in and looked, and he was at zero. And I was like, "Whoa, you just made it!" He goes, zero is what I target every time." I'm like, "Yeah." You some are people are like crazy. that; they're okay with but it. And it's he's, fine. I don't do that either. The only time I'll plan to arrive at my destination with less than 10% is if my destination is home. But Mm -hmm. that's just me. I, I'm sure someday I'll get past that. But on my recent road trip, uh, the one to Michigan where we did 7,000 miles, only once did we have to sit and wait to charge. All the other times we just plug in, use a bathroom, grab a snack, whatever we need to do, and then leave. It doesn't, I don't care if we're at 55%, 80%, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We're leaving. And it worked. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, Next on the list, Lucid Gravity Grand Tour. 94,900, which would be great if you could get it, which you can't. Um, It's the best looking. uh, Well, it's quite expensive. But, you know, we're talking about high range, high performance, high quality cars. Uh, then you've got on the list, you've got the R1T and R1S, uh, both fantastic cars, a bit pricey. One is the SUV, one is the truck. These have a little bit of power, 835 horsepower, but they have over 400 miles of range. Jumping back to look at that, 410 and 420. Um, interesting that the truck has more range, even though it has worse aerodynamics. Interesting, I guess the extra weight makes that difference. But now when we get to the bottom of the list, we see Mm -hmm. the Model S. We're down to 94,000. Comparing that to the 130 we started the list with, this is getting more attractive. Uh, And I mean, I'm sure everyone here knows, but this is what a Model S looks like. Okay. And then we've got the uh, Mercedes EQS 450 Plus, which is, and again, starting at is doing a lot of the heavy lifting because this can be a $131,000 vehicle. And I'm sure even higher if you price it up, I'm sure you could price it even higher. And look at these warranties. This is not, not the most exciting warranty, but the range is pretty darn good. But then on the list, we've got a bit of a shocker here. This mm-hmm. is the Model 3. Model 3, mm-hmm. long range rear wheel drive. You know what mm-hmm. picture I'm going to show for that one, Herbert? Mm-hmm. Yours? This one. <laughs> that's the picture I'm going to show because this is the car we were just talking about. It's a range King and it is shockingly affordable. 42,490 for the rear wheel drive model three with 363 miles of range. The other thing to bear in mind is in the early days of EVs, everyone was fudging the numbers. Everyone was using the test cycles to say they had more range than they do very frustrating. My Model Y gets the range advertised if I'm in the city going slow. But once I get on the highway, forget about it. But the Model 3 and the Model Y Juniper and the Model L, all the newer cars Hmm. actually deliver on the range. They are within a couple percent, even at highway speeds, even at 70, 75 miles an hour, you're going to get very close to the advertised range. And if you're going 50, 60, you're going to blow past the range. You're going to get more range than you expected. Uh, any thoughts on that? I mean, I like that you showed that because I did get, right? You did to the same car, long range. I always get the long range and it's fine. And I, I don't know how many friends we have that we, they've tell us stories where even using the very old, you know, regular Wall 3 from the old days, they would be able to go anywhere in the U.S. They, they just drive anywhere in the U.S. and they've just, there's enough superchargers in the U.S. to be able to get most places you need to go to. So it's not an issue. But if you are concerned about it, then, of course, you can people still buy the one gas car and the one 
electric car for today. That it's it's I I don't think range anxiety is a concern for me anymore. Now, if you live at home, that's a different story. Okay, I get that part. If you live at home, if you can afford a hundred thousand dollar car, <laughs> you don't need to worry about it because you have a super a, 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 a charger at home, and that's a totally different story. Where every single morning you come out with a ninety percent, if you want a hundred percent charged car every time. So, I have never in the car in my electric cars experience the kind of range anxiety that I did in a gas car. Because in gas cars, I've had times when uh, it's like, okay, I got to get to work, but first I got to take the kids to a doctor's yeah. appointment. I get in the car, it takes them forever. And I look down and I'm like, oh no, do I have enough gas? Do I stop to get gas on the way and be, oh right. man, this is so because stressful. Because you wake up in the morning and you go, oh, I, I hadn't actually gone to the gas station for a week now. And now I'm at that, you know, 15% left or whatever it is a quarter tank and then you're like oh sh crap versus tesla's you plug it in every night or you you, know, you decide how you full you need to be when you leave in the yeah. morning it's up to yeah. you uh so what i wanted to figure out is if all these longer range vehicles exist why aren't people buying them and the answer of mm. course comes down to cost so i went ahead and did a yeah. little chart here this is part of a presentation i did over the weekend for the oregon electric vehicle association where i was showing that there are cars better than tesla in every category now there isn't a car better than tesla in more than one category uh, mm -hmm. but unless you count comfort i mean i guess you could say the sapphire lucid sapphire is quicker and more comfortable than a tesla uh, mm -hmm. but at more than twice the price so here we have it uh sorted with the Lu the cadillac 282 bucks per uh mile you should of sort it by cost per range but it's too late <laughs> yeah well, uh, I kept it in the order of most range down, but yes, okay. I, uh, and then in the green here is the model three long range. Look at how cartoonishly low that price is compared to absolutely exactly. anything else on the list. Yeah. Um, there's only one other on the, uh, two others on the list that are, well, I guess three, well, there's a few that are below 200, but none of them are anywhere close to that price. And that mm -hmm. is the real price you get. This, there's only one sound system, it comes with it. Uh, you could spend more on a custom color or wheels, but why? You don't need to. Uh, and adding the custom wheels gets you less range. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. So this is, yeah. And you'll see that the longer the range these vehicles are, typically, the fewer they sell uh, until you get, I mean, other than these two Teslas, there are no real big sellers on this list. So I think, uh, I don't know. I think that uh, if you can afford those vehicles, what you can definitely do is uh, support this channel. Uh, you yeah. Know, about a little bit. <laughs> but you can also just subscribe. You can leave comments. You can like and do all that. Uh, what are your thoughts, closing thoughts on long range? How, how much more would you pay to double the range of your car? I, again, it's like, if how desperate are you today? Because next year and the year after, you're going to get 400 mile range. You're going to have 500 mile range. They're going to do faster, super faster charging by plugging in, and you get, you know, I think I've been hearing now, right? It's 80, 90 percent in within 10, 20 minutes. I don't think it's necessary, it, but it uh, just it doesn't matter to me. Would I pay for more range? Maybe if it was cheap enough, but I don't want my vehicle heavier. I want it to be you know it's a perception I, problem though because uh you know tesla knows and they said you know if the consumers were demanding 500 mile cars then they'd make 500 mile cars it's not right. that they can't they choose to make it to reduce the price uh but the price thing where you know you can get a 500 mile car equivalent to a gas car and then the price lower is coming soon we're not there but when that happens but then here's such kicker evs have the potential batteries have the potential to get to a thousand miles and gas cars are stuck. This mm -hmm. is it. This is the best that they'll ever be. You know? I mean, you could just keep adding more gas tank, but please don't. Please don't. <laughs> uh, guys in the comments, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? I'll leave it. I beg of you. Head over to Brighter with Herbert. Get brighter, won't you? Uh, it's not mandatory, but it's a whole lot of fun. Everybody else, stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity flop. <laughs>